In the preceding programs, you've learned a great deal about the physical structure of the telecommunications networks. This program introduces the people and systems that monitor, manage, maintain, and provision the telecommunications networks. These people, the computer systems they use, and the functions they perform are collectively referred to as operations systems. Operations systems can be categorized into three broad functional areas, administration, provisioning, and maintenance. Administration services are the broad group of functions responsible for the operation and the profitability of the telco. Provisioning services are responsible for the acquisition and allocation of the materials and manpower required to install new facilities and complete new circuits. And maintenance services verify that network components work properly once they're in service. Computerized operation support systems have made possible many network capabilities and services not feasible before the computer entered telecommunications operations. Many of these computerized systems are linked directly to the telecommunications network so that different aspects of operations can be closely monitored, controlled, and tested as needed. In this program, you'll be introduced to several types of computerized support systems, including order processing and billing systems, network usage and performance monitoring systems, network engineering and control systems, testing access and service tracking systems. To see how operation systems operate, let's look at three typical scenarios. Scenario one describes the sequence of actions and events that are required to provide a new customer with residential telephone service. We begin in a telco business office where customer service representative Thomas is in the middle of his workday. Good morning, Mid-State Telephone Company. Mr. Thomas speaking. May I help you? Yes, I just uh, moved into town and I'd like to get my phone hooked up as soon as possible. The customer service representative works at a computer terminal linked to an order processing system. To take this order, the representative must enter certain information into the system. Yes, sir. First of all, I need your name and the address of the home where you'd want the service installed. My name is Clinton W. Clark. The address is 3489 Rutherford Street. As far as you know, has this residence ever had phone service before? Uh, no, it's a brand new house. I'm just moving in. Could I interest you in any of our special services, such as call waiting and call forwarding? Uh, yes, I'd like to have call waiting. The service rep continues with the call until he's entered all necessary information. The order processing system then provides an estimate of when service will be available at that location. This date is based on several factors, such as the time it took to do similar jobs in the past and the current volume of service requests. Okay, Mr. Clark, service will be available at 3489 Rutherford Street by noon on Friday. Well, that's great. Thank you. All right, bye. To provide Mr. Clark with the requested service, a circuit must be provisioned at the local loop level. Provisioning of this circuit will involve several steps. A computer automatically identifies and assigns an available cable pair to the customer. Because this is a new house, a drop will have to be run from the cable pair at the pole or pedestal to the new home. At the other end, the cable pair must be connected to the main distribution frame in the central office. Once the physical connections are made, the switch must be reprogrammed. This is done with a recent change message. Before service is turned up for the customer, a test of the circuit is run. Once the service order is entered, the order processing system passes information to other computerized support systems. This triggers a whole sequence of automated events. Let's take a closer look at how computerized support assists in the response to Mr. Clark's request for service. First of all, the service order is automatically passed from service order processing to a service order assignment system. The service order assignment system has immediate access to a facility assignment system. 
that identifies and reserves the available facilities to be used in building the circuit. More specifically, the facility assignment system identifies an available cable pair, the line from the switch to the cable pair, and the plug-in unit and channel slot if required. Once the facilities are identified, a line record for the circuit is created. Then the component elements of the circuit are posted as in use, making them no longer available for provisioning. At this point, the information takes off simultaneously in three directions, to the installation dispatch system, the frame management system, and the line provisioning system. At the installation dispatch system, a service order is produced for the installer who will connect the new home to the local loop. The installer locates the pole appearance or pedestal for the designated cable pair and connects one end of the drop cable to it. The other end is run to the protector box on the customer's home. The protector box is a standard interface attached to the homes that are pre-wired for telephone service. At the same time, a frame management system passes a service order to another provisioning work group in the central office. With this service order in hand, a frame attendant runs a jumper. This connects the line switch appearance that corresponds to the customer's line equipment number, or LEN, to the cable pair at the main distribution frame. The jumper completes the physical connections for this circuit. Now the electronic switch must be reprogrammed to recognize the new line. A line provisioning system performs this function by passing on a recent change message to the switch. Finally, the responsibility for this circuit shifts from provisioning to maintenance. The maintenance system performs automated line tests to check the circuit's ability to meet the acceptable values for transmission and noise levels. Mr. Clark now has telephone service. Before viewing the next scenario, please return to the computer to review what you have seen so far. Now, let's look at a scenario that shows how network planning, network engineering, and provisioning all work together to enhance the telecommunications network. Hello, I'm Ms. Williams with the Traffic Analysis Group in San Francisco. We identify network traffic problems by analyzing traffic reports. They are generated by the network monitoring system. We recently had one problem situation that I'd like to share with you. We discovered that the traffic level on the trunk groups between San Francisco and Sacramento was unacceptably high. This problem first came to light three months ago when we began receiving exception reports. These reports indicated that the number of rerouted calls had surpassed the threshold value. This problem was supported by traffic reports. They clearly showed us that over the last three months, usage on these trunk groups had approached the unacceptably high level. I discussed this information with the rest of our traffic analysis group. We concluded that adding new trunks to these trunk groups was the best way to address this problem. More specifically, our plan was to make use of existing unused facilities to add trunks to the T1 system. Finally, we set the order completion date. This would be the date when the new facilities should be available. Ms. Williams and the traffic analysis group sent their plan along with the data they collected to a trunk provisioning group. A member of this group is Mr. Will Dunn, who will tell the rest of this story. When we received the trunk group plan from the traffic analysis group, we generated a trunk order. A trunk order specifies the characteristics of the trunks to be provisioned. Trunk characteristics include, among others, the endpoints of the trunks, the type of supervision that the trunks will use, the type of signaling, and the direction of traffic on the trunks. Next, we pass the trunk order to a network engineering group. The network engineering group employed a facility engineering system that automatically designed trunk circuits and reserved the available facilities on the T1 system. Before we continue, let's recap our provisioning process up to this point. First, the traffic analysis group used data from the network monitoring system. They identified a problem and sent their plan to the trunk provisioning group, which generated a trunk order. The trunk order was passed to the network engineering group, which employed a facility engineering system. 
This system automatically designed and reserved the necessary facilities. The facility engineering system produced a trunk order document that specified the facilities on which the new trunks will reside. The trunk order document also scheduled the provisioning effort by defining the trunk engineering completion date, personnel assigned date, equipped and office tested date, plant test date, and finally, order completion date. By the trunk engineering completion date, the trunk order document was published. The shipment of equipment to the various field locations had been initiated. This was done automatically by a material acquisition system. By the personnel assigned date, all work groups had received their trunk order documents. Also, all equipment had been delivered to the field and personnel assignments were made. The work on this project was underway. At the central offices, trunk provisioning technicians performed several functions. They passed a trunk recent change message onto the switches so the new trunks would be recognized. Using information on the trunk order document, other technicians ran cross cuts to physically connect the switches and the new trunks. Technicians also installed the plug-in units required to complete the circuits. Field technicians were also required to provision the trunks. Plug-in units had to be installed and adjusted at the repeater huts between offices. By the equipped and office tested date, each office and work group had completed and tested its portion of the provisioning effort. On the plant test date, overall end-to-end -end performance testing of the new trunks was performed. Remote testing of the circuits was done using a testing access system. On the order completion date, we turned the carrier up, making it available for use as a part of the network. When the facility engineering system produced the trunk order document, the information on the significant dates was automatically sent to the provisioning tracking system. If any work had not been completed by the scheduled date, a jeopardy would have been posted by the provisioning tracking system. In this way, the progress of the job can be monitored and action can be taken to keep it on schedule. This scenario has shown how the coordinated efforts of the network planning, network engineering, and provisioning can design and implement enhancements to the network. Before viewing the next scenario, please return to the computer to review what you have seen so far. Our final operation systems in action scenario deals with trunk maintenance. It begins in a maintenance test center. Hey Bill, who's working at HGTN today? The trunk access system reports a few troubles last night. Let me take a look. Bob will be in the area the rest of the day. Well, maybe I can con Bob into looking into these trunks. It seems that two of them had transmission troubles. These computerized messages and trouble tickets came in response to an alarm given by the test access system. This system was performing routine tests on the various trunk groups in the HGTN central office. The testing is performed during low traffic periods, usually after midnight. I'm Jerry, a maintenance technician. When a trunk goes down, it's my responsibility to write the trouble ticket if necessary. I also enter the trouble in our trouble tracking system. If the system hasn't already made the trunks busy to keep traffic off of them, I can make the trunks busy from my keyboard. I can also diagnose and restore these trunks from this position. I run diagnostics on the two trunks before I call Bob. If the trunks pass, I'll ask Bob to tone them to the end office. And my diagnostics will only test trunks for continuity to the first carrier facility. Well, just as I thought, the, the trunks pass diagnostics, but transmission problems are rarely detected by diagnostics. If Bob works with me, I won't have to assign anyone else later. Hello, Bob speaking. This is Jerry. Jerry will try to convince Bob to add this extra work to his loaded work order. Hi, right, Jerry, what can I do for you? 
Okay, Jerry, I'll do it. If there's someone to work with at the various T1 locations in the destination office, fax me the trouble ticket so I can look at the circuit layout. The trouble ticket lists the characteristics of the trunk, such as its method of signaling and supervision. It also contains a layout of the circuit. With the trouble ticket, Bob can begin troubleshooting our transmission problem. Let's take a look at the T1 system, the circuit layout. It identifies the endpoints of the trunk group. The problem must lie on or between these two points. To begin the troubleshooting, Bob will decide whether the T1 span is operating correctly between his office, HGTN, and the next office down the line, which is ELBN. Bob hooks up the test set before he calls Floyd. Hello, this is Floyd at ELBN. May I help you? This is Bob at HGTN. I have a trunk down between my office and Slim. Would you check for tone on T1 span 101 channel 6? Okay, I'll take a look at that. All right. It checks for tone at D4 carrier frame. Bob, I'm over to D4. Everything looks like it's uh, fine over here. Okay, thanks, Floyd. Yeah, I'll check the next leg. Maybe the problem's there. Yeah. Thanks again. The test indicates that the trunk's transmission level is okay over the first leg of its path. Proceeding in this systematic fashion, Bob's next step is to check the next leg. This is Bob at HGTN. Would you check for tone on T1 span 111, channel 6? Looks okay on my end. I think your trouble is in Slim. There's only one more place to check. I'll call Slim. Good morning, Bridget. Hi, Bridget. This is Bob over in HGTN. Would you look for tone on T1 span 102, channel 6? Sure. Hold on a minute. By using this computer, Bridget can check any channel in the D5 system. Line side looks okay, just a minute. Looks like I have a problem with one of the channel banks. Hold on a minute while I change a pack. Bridget is changing the pack. She will also retest the channel to make sure she fixed the problem. That seems to have fixed the problem. Anything else? Have a good day. When the maintenance technician replaces the channel unit, the field work is completed. The trouble ticket will be closed out on the system. This automatically refers the ticket back to Jerry at the test center. This is Jerry. Can I help you? Jerry, this is Bob at HGTN. Channel 6 is back online. I restored the trunk to service at HGTN. Thanks, Bob. As our scenarios have dramatized, operations systems are composed of many different people, work groups, and computerized support systems. Through the coordinated efforts of operations systems, the telecommunications network continues to be effectively managed, maintained, and provisioned. Now, please return.